If I was to ask you what a minister looked like, you'd probably say something like this, maybe like this, but you would never guess something like this. Today we're talking about Carl Lentz, the big de facto celebrity pastor. He baptized Kevin Durant in his bathtub, best friends with Justin Bieber. Chris Pratt goes to his church, and for all of the fame this guy has, recently he has lost it in a very embarrassing way. The church now embroiled in scandal after its most famous figure, Pastor Carl Lentz, was let go last week. And a lot of the stuff about the Hillsong Church where he used to work at has come out of the woodworks. So we're going into that today and more. To understand Carl Lentz and his huge rise to fame, we need to take a look at how did he become friends with Justin Bieber? It's 2017, Justin Bieber's on tour. He's at a concert. It's the last song in the show. He's dancing, he's singing, and Justin passes out. Falls flat on his face, the crowd goes silent. No one knows what's going on. But little did anyone know, Carl Lentz was in the crowd, and he felt compelled in his heart to do something about this. So he gets his hands, parts open the crowd, like he's opening up the Red Sea. Carl gets on the stage, walks up to Justin, gets his holy water that he always carried with him and just oh. sprinkles it on Justin's face. Justin's eyes wake up, he gets up, finishes the song, everyone cheers on. It's an amazing moment in history. I wish I could have been there. And from that point on, Justin and Carl became inseparable. Justin was taking him on tour. He was taking him to all these interviews. They were shopping all the time. Justin Bieber even lived at Carl Lentz's house for a couple of months. Carl had so much pull with Justin that he convinced them to cancel his tour to focus on his relationship with God and further indoctrinate him more. And it was almost a little bit too much. It was this relationship that started from nothing that became everything all at once. He was seeking all this advice within Carl. Justin really looked up to him. And Carl was always asking him to introduce him to new people. So he got to meet Oprah. He got to go on all these TV shows. He got known as the pastor that was helping Justin Bieber. The church got millions of dollars. It convinced Chris Pratt and Vanessa Hudgens to come to the church. They had so much money coming in that they had to make a VIP section in a church to have all the celebrities in the front and everyone else that's regular, they go in the back, forget about them. People are seeing this and they're a little bit disturbed because Carl's taking a lot of traits from Justin Bieber. Carl starts getting volunteers in the church, not paid workers, volunteers, and starts having them do the same things that Justin has his assistants do. So now Carl has a personal dog walker that's a volunteer of the church. Carl has a private chef that's a volunteer. He has a nanny, he has a babysitter, he has a house cleaner, a chauffeur, that all are volunteers for the church and people aren't taking this too kindly. And Justin notices this relationship's getting a little too weird. It's around 2019, Justin breaks off the relationship completely clean because he's realizing that he's not getting a lot out of this and this pastor is just milking him for his fame, taking his money, taking his connections and Justin was getting used and good for him, honestly. So he cut Carl out of his life, realizing what a parasite he was. So Carl's out, church is slowing down because now it's COVID and Carl's out walking his dog and one day, he sees a woman, Renine Karim, and he falls in love with this woman. He walks up to her, they exchange numbers, they start going on a couple of dates. And within the first few dates, Renine got some weird vibes from him. When she asked for his last name, he wouldn't even tell her. And then trying to ask what he does for work, he said, oh, I'm a sports agent, don't worry about it. But the details were so vague. So Renine hired a private investigator to look into who exactly was this guy. The private investigator comes back and finds out that Carl is the pastor at the Hillsong Church that Renine has been to before, but that's not even the worst part. She finds out that Carl is a married man of 17 years and has three kids. At this point, you would think this would be a huge red flag. Hey, I'm fucking a pastor that's married with a wife and kids. That is a one-way ticket to hell. That's what I would think, personally. But she's not weirded out by it, so she goes up to Carl, asks him, hey, what's up with this? I saw that you're married. I saw that you're a pastor. And he admits to it cleanly. And she asks him, are you upset in your marriage? Do you want to get out of it? Are you mad? And Carl just looks at her straight in the eyes and says, no, I just want to fuck. So she continues to start seeing him. And she even said, this is her quote, that I looked at him as a clean slate where I can paint my own colors in it. I don't get to judge anyone. I would 100% judge a pastor that was married with three kids that was having an affair with you. That's kind of a big deal, but Renine's fine with it. So Carl has an iPhone. And when you have an iPhone, you can connect it to your Mac and have all of your messages on there. So Carl's away on a business trip and the Mac was at his church and his wife logs on and finds all of the text messages from his phone on the computer right there and finds out about the affair. And she's livid, rightfully so. Calls Carl, he flies home, they try to figure it out. So what they agree to is that they're not gonna tell anyone about this 
He's going to break it off with Renine. They're going to go to couples therapy and no one will know and everything's going to be fine. So they do that. Everything's kind of going fine, but Carl can't get Renine out of his head. He even called her his Middle Eastern unicorn. He loved this woman. Renine even stated that he would come, come back. crawling back on his hands and knees, come begging back. to be with her again. And then they would sleep together again and they would break it up. And it was this very toxic cycle. And his wife knew about this the whole time. So it was for a couple of months this was going on, but it got to a tipping point with his wife. And his wife said, I'm gonna call the head pastor and tell him what's going on. And Carl said, no, 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 no. And she's like, I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna fucking tell him. I'm gonna fucking, no, please don't. Please. And I'm calling him. I'm calling him right now and called him and let the head pastor know my husband has been having an affair. He has been unfaithful to me. So the head pastor has a secret meeting, not with them, but with the head congregates. And they decide that they're gonna get rid of Carl. He's too much of a liability and they wanna keep it clean. Because you can't be having an, a head pastor cheat on cheating on his wife Vote. when he's doing sermons Vote. about cheat not cheating wife. on your wife and being good to the Lord. So November 3rd, they do it very publicly. They get rid of him. It's on Instagram. And then Carl goes on his Instagram and posts up this whole thing about how he's gonna make it better with his wife and this whole dealio. But it was a picture with his wife and his kids. Like, like why are your kids in the photo when you're talking about cheating on your wife? That's weird. That is so weird, but whatever. So then there was the paparazzi that was photographing Carl and his wife trying to get back together. They saw them going to couples therapy. Carl was at the beach doing his sun salutations, wearing his Dr. Dre beats with his cornrows in his hair, with the shirt off, using his diary, writing his notes on how he's gonna get his life back together. And it seemed like maybe Carl would come back to the church. But then some lucky fellow on December 3rd leaked an audio clip from that meeting. And the big thing that came out was that Carl wasn't just fired for that affair. No, no, no. That was just the tipping point of the whole situation. The call revealed that Carl was doing this for years and with many different women. And it was the narcissism, it was the lying, it was all these things that the church had told no one. And this was just the one thing that was public where they were like, we gotta just cut it right there. So then now people knew, wow, the church is hiding all this stuff about Carl. I wonder what else they're hiding. So Carl goes into like a rehab for pastoral burnout. I've never even heard of that, but I guess that's a real thing, pastoral burnout. So they start looking into the church and what else have they done wrong? So it comes to be that the founder of the church, his name is Brian Houston. His father is Frank Houston. Frank Houston is a pastor there. And in 2003, he confessed to molesting nine boys in the ministry to his father. And you know what his father did? He took away his pastor hat, which was, I get, and did nothing about it. He didn't go to the police. He didn't go to the authorities, nothing. They just talked to the nine victims. They paid him out 10K each and just called it a day. Disturbing at this point. So when the Carl Lentz thing is coming out, those victims come around again and say, we never got paid out for that, which is fucked up. So then here's what happened. So this is from one of the kids that was abused. What's happening with the payment I was promised? I agreed to forgive your father. Brian Houston dealing with all the fallout says, yes, okay, I'll get the money to you. There's no problem, you know, but it is your fault that all of this happened. You tempted my father, a 50 year old guy being tempted by a seven year old boy. Absolutely disturbing. But I do have to say all this is allegedly, Brian Houston has denied any of this happening. So that's all I have to say. And that's not all that happened at the Hillsong Church. In 2015, the lead singer of the Hillsong Church group did a attempted rape against one of the students there. So what happened was the sexual assault was happening in the church. And when the girl tried to run out to get away, a worker actually noticed she was running out and chased her down, held open the door and said, do not tell anyone that this happened. So then the girl goes to the head pastor and they get the eyewitnesses to cooperate everything going on. And what do they do with the lead singer of the band that sexually assaulted a girl in church that I'm not gonna go into the details because it's quite graphic. Do they get rid of him? They do, but on a paid leave for 12 months. Paid, that's it. He came back, he was working there. So when the Carl Lentz thing came out, this girl went to the police and actually filed a court case and they went through the whole thing. So the guy that was in the band, he ended up getting two years probation. That's it for the whole thing. And then he got kicked out of the church. But this is the stuff that the Hillsong Church was hiding, making sure no one knew, that's it. So you got the Hillsong burning down all because of Carl Lentz. Now what's going on with Carl nowadays? 
So currently, he's still living in LA. He's doing his thing. He's actually trying to get a Netflix deal for some kind of spiritual reality show, and no one's taking his call back. No one wants to talk to him. No one wants to deal with him. So I wish the best for him. Oh, and how could I forget? Tyler Perry, yes, the Medea Tyler Perry, gave him $100,000 to pay his rent for six months. Not a loan, a gift. If he wants to do that, go ahead for him, but I just think that's absolutely insane. So... Why did this happen? Celebrity pastors, that's why. Imagine being the man giving Justin Bieber advice that he's actually following through on. You've gotta feel like a god at that point. Everyone's coming up to you. Everyone wants to know what the answer is and you have them. That's gotta feel so good. And the culture behind that where it's these guru types, it's almost like these, they're not even human beings at this point. They're just these superstars where everything is amazing about him. And that pressure that he had with hanging out with these huge celebrities, like, of course that's gonna happen. I think a lot of it's just fame and greed. But honestly, what do I know? I don't know the guy. He probably knows the story a lot more than I do, right? But I wish the best for him. I don't wish any ill will. I hope he gets his life figured out. And honestly, I want to watch a spiritual reality show because that sounds sick. I would totally watch that. Carl, if you're watching this, those abs look nice. I'm, I'm going to be honest. They look nice. Subscribe.